mitochondrion, the powerhouse of the cell. It's an organelle, and that's where where the uh, internal respiration takes place, right? The aerobic glycolysis, which would yield um, 36 ATPs. Okay. Uh, then the then right the axon. So the axon actually is that big tail-like uh, appendage, and it is wrapped by. You see the yellow part, okay? That's known as the neural neurolemma, neural neurolemma. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they make it so hard to find this. And neurolemma is actually a made up of the swan, swan, swan cells. Sure. Okay, so they are cells uh, connected with each other and together they form the neurolemma. So you see the nuclei, the violet ones, those are the nuclei of the Schwann cells. Okay, now underneath this layer of neurolemma is a fatty layer made up of fat, basically. And that layer is known as the. Anyone wants to guess? The myelin, the myelin sheath. And if it is in the peripheral nervous system, it is produced by these one cells themselves. However, if it's in the central nervous system, it's produced by the another type of cell known as the oligodendro oligodendrocytes an even longer name. So oligodendrocytes are one of the supporting cells, okay, that will produce the myelin sheath in the central nervous system. In the peripheral nervous system, the myelin sheath is produced by the swan cells themselves, okay? Mm -hmm. Now some of these axons will not have the myelin sheath. So a collection of ax axons uh, that will have myelin sheaths uh, will form what is known as part of the brain as the white matter. What is the uh, opposite of the white matter? Black gray. lives matter. Gray. Oh, sorry. There's gray. no black matter. It's, it's gray. Oh. <laughs> it's gray. That was a trick question. It's gray <laughs> matter. Okay. They did, I know. They, they just uh, made up this name. This name a long time ago. But usually the white matter is made up of uh, axons that are myelinated, that has a myelin sheath. Okay, so oh they look white uh, when you slice the brain. If you, for example, <laughs> in autopsy, you take out the brain, then you slice it, either a sagittal section or a coronal section. You see the white, whitish part, the pale part, that's the white matter. And then um, There's also a difference between the, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go to that when we reach that slide. So you understand the difference between the neurolemma and the myelin sheath. That's very clear, right? Next, uh, the glia. Glia cells are the support cells. Uh, they are there to support the neurons. But the main cells are the neurons, right? So these are just the supporting cast. The glia cells, and there are three types of them. The astrocytes. What do you understand by astro? Star. Astro stars. It represents star, stars. So astrocytes are star. Sites mean, mean cells. So these are star-shaped cells that anchor the small blood vessels uh, to the neurons. Next are the micro, micro meaning very small, microscopic glia cells, very small cells that move in inflamed brain tissue carrying, <coughs> carrying on phagocytosis. So they are the soldiers. The microglia are responsible for phagocytosis. Remember phagocytosis when we were in, in the blood, blood system, right? Hemat hematologic system. They, they, they eat up, they eat up stuff, right? Germs, bacteria, foreign body. They phagocytize, or they eat it up. Now, and the last one are the, what I mentioned earlier, oligodendrocytes, they, form the myelin sheath in the CNS. Remember, that's exactly what I said in the previous slide. Now the swan cells are uh, form the myelin sheath in the peripheral nervous system. Okay, so that's a, that's a uh, significant difference. Okay. All 
All right. Um, <clears throat> the neuroglia. Okay. The astrocytes are here. See, they're star shaped and they anchor the blood vessels. See, this is the blood vessel, the capillary to the neuron. Okay. And the microglia, these are the ones that produces phagocytosis. And this is the, uh, the oligodendrocyte that produces the myelin sheath, which encloses the nerve fiber itself in the central nervous system. This is the central nervous system neuron. Okay. Now, you have to, when you say nerve, there's a lot of, of meaning, right? So it's a very ambiguous term. Like when somebody insults you, you say, the nerve doesn't really mean like a structure, right? So when you say nerve, basically it could mean a nerve tract, it could mean the white matter, the gray matter, or a, a bundle of nerves. Or it can mean a single nerve fiber itself, right? So it's a very uh, ambiguous, all right? So uh, the white matter is tissue composed primarily of myelinated axons. So that's why it's the fatty tissue in the myelinate, in the myelin sheath that will give it a whitish appearance. So that's why it's known as the white matter. And the gray matter composed primarily of cell bodies and no my myelin and myelinated fibers. Okay. Okay, let me see if you could recall from term one, what is the importance of the myelin sheet? What is? It bounces the electrical current faster to each ion. Why? Through the? To the, uh, to the axon, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it jumps over. Remember that type of, what's the Spanish word for jump? Is Sal that? Corre? Salta, so remember, uh, saltatory conduction, right? Salta, okay, saltatory conduction. Okay, I'm just trying to do that so that you can correlate it and you can remember it more easily. Okay, so that's the, remember those, those the, there are nodes uh, spaced, uh, spaced regularly in the myelin sheet and those are known as the nodes of Ranvier. And the impulse will jump from node to node to node. That is conduction on a saltatory conduction. All right. Now, the, this nerve covering, so the nerves, Depending on where it is, uh, it could be covered by the, uh, from the outermost, which is the perineurium, remember that? The peritoneum is the outermost, right? So perineurium, then, no, the outer, outermost is the epineurium, then the perineurium, then the endoneurium, which is, I'll show you a picture of that so that a picture is better to understand. Okay, here. So the entire nerve tract, Okay, it's an entire nerve tract. It's composed of several uh, nerve fascicles. This one is one fascicle, another fascicle, this is another fascicle. It's not, and then it's the entire thing together is known as the nerve tract. Sometimes you just call it a nerve, right? So that's why I said it's, it's, it's sometimes it's ambiguous. Now what wraps the uh, nerve? Nerve tract is the EP, epineurium. epineurium. Okay, and what wraps the fascicle is the perineurium. Now the fascicle is made up of individual nerve fibers, and what wraps the individual nerve fiber here, the axon, okay, uh, is the endoneurium. So do you understand? So just it's much easier if you just look at this picture. It's easier to understand what these uh, coverings are. Okay, again. The individual from inside to out, from smaller to bigger. Um, the individual nerve fibers covered by the endoneurium. Then the individual nerve fibers are organized into fascicles, and each fascicle is covered by the, um, by the perineurium here, okay, the gray one. And then the fascicles are grouped together, are organized together with the, uh, the fatty tissue, which is the myelin, and it's wrapped into a nerve tract, and the nerve tract tract is wrapped by the epineurium. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. All right. So this is again another uh, just a cross section of that same thing. So the swan cell will produce the myelin sheet, and it will form the neurolemma. Now reflex arcs. Simplest ref reflex arcs are the two neuron arcs. Um, can you tell me a, a 
an example of a reflexed arc? What's mm -hmm. the most common? The when you smack the knee. Yeah, what do you call that? The percussion. It's a reflex, right? Reflex. Yeah, use a percussion hammer to do that. It's known as the knee jerk reflex. Okay, a knee jerk reflex. Basically, I need a volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, if you just, you, you let the, the leg hang freely, hang freely, yeah, because this is too, too low, the chair is too low, so let, let, it should be hanging freely, so the, the patient should not be exerting any effort, should not be putting weight on it, or should not be contracting any muscle, otherwise you, you won't be able to elicit the reflex. Now, the patella, patella is this part of the knee, right? The, the kneecap. Okay, which is used, the usual target by the uh, by the uh, ma mafioso. Yeah. The mafia. They want to punish you. They'll shoot your kneecaps. So they call it. He got kneecap. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, you don't shoot it. You use a percussion hammer. You know that little hammer. And that? Like a triangle. Hmm? Like a triangle. With, yeah, with a triangle triangular head, like a tomahawk. But a smaller one, but made of rubber. You 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 percuss the patella. Actually, there's a tendon there. And then, what is the positive reflex? What do you call that? Flexion. Movement. Or extension. Mm -hmm. Extension of the knee. So when you say action, it's usually a movement of a joint. So the joint involved here is the knee joint. So extension of the knee joint. All right, Bertha. Good. Uh, so extension of the of the knee joint. How does that work? It's a reflex. So reflex usually there's a stimulus and then an action. And it happens so quickly. Tick, bam, tick, tick, bam. Okay, it goes very quickly. And it, and it happens automatically. You don't even think about it. So when, when I do the percussion on Vannery's knee or patella, hard. She doesn't even think about what, what it's going to do. It just happens, right? It's automatic. Well, it's a reflex. So in that sense, what do you think is the purpose of reflexes? These reflex are? Spontaneous movement. It's a protective uh, mechanism. So for example... Oh, a reflex? Yeah. Like when somebody, Remember? If somebody hits me, then my reflex is to cock to back. back. Yeah. And hit back? Yes. Yeah, that could be that could be a reflex too. But <laughs> what I'm talking about uh, when when you know when you're cooking and then you don't know uh, oh, you you lose your way and then you hit your elbow on on something that's very hot on the on the uh, on the stove. What is your reflex reaction? Is to move away from the hot stimulus. So the the, the heat is the pain. It, it it is the pain is the stimulus and then your arm as a protective mechanism, it's a reflex action, you don't even think about it, right? We'll automatically move away from the painful stimulus, right? So the, these, uh, the, um, Andres is totally correct that these reflexes are protective in nature, protective and defensive. Now, wh what is the two neuron arc? I already gave that to you. So it involves, first is a stimulus, right? So in this case, the uh, knee jerk is the percussion, the blow from the percussion number, that's the stimulus. And the action or the effect would be the extension of the knee. Now what, what are in between? So the percussion is sensed by sensors, right? It's being perceived by the sensors and then it will travel through the, is it the afferent or the efferent nerve? Efferent is to, it's towards, efferent. Ah, afferent. Ah. Afferent or ah. sensory nerve. Okay, sensory or afferent. It's words. Yeah, the, uh, the away does not, does not work here. Okay, and then, and then it goes to the center, central processing unit, just like a computer. It has a CPU, the microchip, microprocessor. So it's very rapidly processed, usually. And for these simple reflexes, the reflex arc, are processed only up to the level of the spinal cord. It does not need to go up to the brain because it's, remember, it's a protective mechanism. It has to act quickly. So that, that reflex should be processed very quickly. So it just goes to the spinal nerve, then it, the, the efferent nerve 
the uh, action will be sent back right away because it will take time if it has to climb up all the way up to the brain, right? So the spinal reflexes are actually the protective reflexes that we have, okay? And so it's either the simplest one is the two neuron arc and then the three neuron arc, we mentioned this. The third neuron is the enter neuron that we talked about earlier. Remember, we were talking about the enter neuron. So here, this is the illustration. So the this is the percussion hammer. It will hit the patella, it will hit the ligament. That's the stimulus, right? And then the afferent nerve or the sensory, this is a sensory receptor will be taken by the sensory nerve or the afferent nerve, goes to the, this is a slice of the spinal cord, okay, that is responsible for the knee part. And then this is a two neuron reflex, is the violet one, or if there's an interneuron, this, this, I don't know, it's a black or a red one on your book. That's what we're talking about, the colors are not right. Yeah. That's right. It's black. black. Yeah. This one is black, it's like a little bit red. This is the interneuron. If it's a three, three neuron reflex, do you understand? Then it will send it back right away to the efferent nerve or the motor nerve. And then it will cause the muscle here, the quadriceps muscle, to the quadriceps muscle, this is the muscle here in the anterior thigh. It will be inserted on the patella, on the knee. And so what happens? It will pull pull the knee, and so it will straighten the, the leg at the knee joint. So that is the action. So when you're doing it, be careful that you are not facing the patient. Or you might get it somewhere very uncomfortable, right? Uh, so that's the response. All right? Is this clear, the reflex arc? So it happens very quickly. Stimulus, afferent or sensory, center, then sense the uh, motor or the afferent, then there's the action. So stimulus, then a corresponding response or action. All right? Will there be an action without the stimulus? Usually no, okay? Unless it's voluntarily done. But there's still a stimulus too. I mean, there's a command from the, this one is central now. It's voluntary, right? Now, nerve impulses, uh, how it happens, it's something to do with a sodium ion. Remember, I told you sodium. We're talking about fluid and electrolytes. Sodium is the predominant extracellular cation. Cation if it's positively charged, right? And ion if it's negatively charged. So, it's supposed to be, this is a cell membrane. The cell, the cell nucleus. So, sodium ions are usually extracellular, right? Outside the cell. Now, when there's a stimulus or there's a, um, a stimulus, it would react, the cells would react by uh, permitting the sodium to go inside the cell, which would create a disturbance <coughs> along the, the membrane of the cell and it is known as, an, as a depolarization. And the depolarization would cause an action potential. They're almost synonymous. And this action potential will be transmitted from, from the membrane to the membrane and then to the next neuron. Okay? So that is how a, uh, a response or a, an impulse, a nerve impulse is generated. Okay? By initially movement of the sodium into the cell to the plasma membrane, okay? So that would raise an action potential inside and this would be uh, transmitted throughout the plasma membrane and then to the next neuron and so on. Uh, through, through the same thing, through the, through the axon, right? The axon will be passed on to the next neuron and so on and so forth. So that's how it moves from the knee, the sensor is from the knee, and then it goes to the spinal cord and then the same impulse, no, the, the, the response will be sent to as an impulse and will travel all the way to the, to the, to the uh, muscle or the, or the ligament, right? So that is what happens here. These are nerve impulses.
Now the synapse. Remember this? So um, it's from at the tip of the axon to the plasma membrane of the next neuron. So it's a way to transmit the impulse, the action potential that was generated by the stimulus, right, to the next neuron. So usually the, uh, the action will terminate in something that looks like that. Okay, in the neuromuscular junction, it's known as a sole foot. Not the sole of the foot, but known as a sole foot. That's for the NM junction, nerve, uh, uh, neuromuscular junction. But this one is from neuron to neuron. And then this is the uh, plasma membrane of the next neuron, right? There's a, a little amount of space. These are microscopic, okay? You cannot see it. Okay, even if you dissect the, the nerves, you cannot see this, these things because these are microscopic. All right. So this is just largely enlarged. So you, this, this, uh, this, this hollow part or vacant part is known as the synaptic cleft. Okay. And so the impulse is traveling through the axon. So how is it transferred to the next neuron? This is the plasma membrane cell wall of the next neuron, right? So we have here known as neurotransmitters. There are various types, we'll go into that later. Just for now, let's call them neurotransmitter, right? And in the, uh, in the plasma membrane, they're also known as receptor sites. Receptor sites. Which are specific. It's a lock and key configuration. So the lock can be only open by a specific key. They have to be compatible. You understand? So for example, the receptor sites might look like this. Okay, now some of these neurotransmitters, what is the red one, might look like this. All right, so which you think, it, which neurotransmitters do you think are compatible with the receptors in the next neuron? The black ones or the red ones? The black ones, because they, they seem like a perfect fit, right? This one will not open the key, the lock, because it's not the key, right? So this is how it works. Now, sometimes there are enzymes that will inhibit the neurotransmitters. Sometimes there are enzymes there that will clear the neurotransmitters so that the, uh, not really sometimes, they are always there and will stop the transmission. Once the desired effect is done, it will stop the action of the neurotransmitters. These are enzymes that, for example, if the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. Oh, yeah, ACTPH. Okay. Okay, other transmitters could be uh, the catecholamines, remember? The catecholamines? Uh, I know that. There's three of them, right? Those two are. Those no, are the epinephrine. Oh. epinephrine or epinephrine produced by? The adrenal medulla. Adrenal medulla or cortex? cortex. cortex. Medulla. So those are the. <laughs> you were right the first time. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure if you're sure. <laughs> All right. So it's the catecholamines, epinephrine, nor epinephrine. Okay. And then there could be dopamine, right? It could even be serotonin. All right. Now, this is the more common one. The, the most common one is for muscles, right? For if it's the neuromuscular junction, usually it's the acetylcholine, right? It's the neurotransmitter. The enzyme that will take care of it or will lyse it is acetylcholinesterase. Remember, ACE usually connotes an enzyme, right? So acetylcholinesterase will inhibit or will get rid of the acetylcholine. 
So if you have a medicine, a drug, known as anticholinesterase, what does it do? It has a synaptic effect. No. It stops the enzyme from stopping acetylcholine. Yes. To have a color gene. Exactly. Uh, stop the enzyme so it will inhibit the inhibitor. Therefore, it will promote the action of the transmitter. Therefore, it's also a cholinergic drug. You understand? So be careful about the names of these drugs. You're going to have a pharmacology HESI. Be careful you understand what it means. Okay, just by, by the name alone, you'll get an idea. You'll be very, very clear about these names. All right? Does this make sense? Everybody understands this? Any questions? Big or small? No? All right. See, it's specific. It means it has to be lock and key. It has to be compatible with each other. Otherwise, it won't work. It will not produce the desired transmission. Okay, so names of neurotransmitters, acetylcholine, catecholamines, norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, dopamine and serotonin are also known as catecholamines, but I was referring to the adrenal medulla products, which are the norepinephrine and epinephrine. Okay? Uh, it's the medulla. Because the... Remember the cortex are the SSS, right? The sugar, sex, no, sugar, salt, and sex, right? That's the cortex. And nitric oxide and other compounds. So this, these are the neurotransmitters. So this is the synapse, right? So this is synaptic cleft right here. These are the neurotransmitters. And when the impulse reaches here, at the tip of the axon, remember the depolarization the action potential which is here, it will release them. It will open up and it will release the neurotransmitters and it will go through this and it, it will cause the transmission of the impulse from this neuron, from the axon of this neuron, to this second neuron. So that's the purpose of the synapse, to, to make it a, a fast transmission. So it's like, think of it like an electrical wire. So it can go, it can go from the light switch to the light. So when you turn it off, that's the impulse. Then it will turn off. If you switch it on, then it will light up again. So same thing. So the lighting up or the turning it off is the effect. You understand? So this is just a way of transmission from one neuron to another. All right? So the divisions of the brain, the brain itself, we have the brain stem. There are three parts of the brain stem. Anybody remember? Brain stem. The what? Uh-huh. Okay. You said medulla? Oblongata because it's kind of oblong shape. And then the pons. And then the, the midbrain. You guys knew that off the top of your head. So next time, next time, next time when, uh, when your girlfriend or boyfriend, you think, oh, I just love your midbrain. You know, no, no, she, she, go, she would be trying, what does he mean by that? Anyway, it was just a joke. Anyway, which is the uh, most inferior part or the distal part? That's most towards the stem that goes down to the spinal cord? Yes. Which one is the lowest part or the most distal part? It's the medulla, right? Because the extension of the medulla, it will extend into the first part of the spinal cord. Yes, sir. And then this one, the midbrain, that's why it's called the midbrain because it's very close to the main brain itself, right? Like the cerebellum. No, not cerebellum, but the cerebrum. All right? And the pons is the one between. Okay? And they have each, uh, each of these overlaps different functions. And most of the, the cranial nerves will emanate from the brainstem. Most of the uh, if not all of the cranial nerves, the 12 pairs of cranial nerves will be emanating from the brain cell.
We're gonna make noise over here. Okay. So, what's the function of the of the brainstem? They are just a conduit. Okay. Uh, towards the upper centers, the cerebell, cerebrum, or to the lower centers, to the spinal cord. So it's just a connection. Okay. So it's like a substation. You know, you know, when you go around town, you see these big, big power towers. Okay, that's a substation, right? That's a power, power substation. So it's something like that. Uh, it's a conduit, but actually more than that. So it can go up to the brain or down to the spinal cord. So here they are. So these are the parts of the brain. This is the cerebrum. Okay. That's the biggest part. Usually it's divided into two hemispheres, two globes. One on each side, we have the left and the right cerebrum. And it has something to do with handedness. So, uh, Robert, are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Right-handed. So which, which is your dominant brain? Left side. The left left. Cere cerebral hemisphere or the right? Less cerebral hemisphere. Yeah, because it crosses, right? The connection crosses. So it's the opposite side or the contralateral side. Okay, mm -hmm. if you're right-handed, it's the left brain that con that is dominant uh, in your brain. I was left-handed, but I keep getting smacked. Uh -huh. <laughs> so your right side? Yeah, my mom's left-handed, so she keeps smacking so me. So now, the right now the, left, the left side is more dominant than the right? Yeah. Well, you can smack it back too, so that <laughs> you get get your left-handedness back. All right. Oh, sure. You tell your wife to do that every night. So. No, she goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is the uh, the this the yellow, the pale yellow, all the way down here. These are this this is the midbrain. Okay. So this is the medulla, right? This is the pons, and this is the midbrain. Okay. One, two, three. So the most distal part is the medulla oblongata and this one so you see it's right at the neck right here at the neck so in in my country there's a native tribe there they're known as the ifogao tribe they have this dance or they have this ritual of killing the the uh, beast of burden uh, in, in 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 that region which is known as, it's actually a water buffalo, but in, in my country it's known as the carabao. You know this nail? Yes. Okay, <coughs> and so they have this festival, this Ifugao tribe. It's very similar to the Native American tribes, okay? And they have this festival, they call it the Kanyao festival, and they kill the carabao. It's a ritual to kill the carabao. Uh, for food, but there's a ceremony, it's a ritual. What they do is the is to hit the carabao on the medulla. Oh, nice. Spinal tap. Bam. <laughs> and that so actually that's that looks brutal, but actually that's very humane because it, it leads to instant death. If you do it properly, the animal will go down right away. Without much pain. You would just uh, because it will as cause uh, uh, instant cardiopulmonary arrest. And it's a very big animal and then it will just go down. So I just, I just uh, use that story to demonstrate how important this is. When you cut it, you die. When it's cut, you die. That's why you see it's in the innermost part of your, of your cranium. It's very well protected by the skull, the cranium, by the bone. And then it has meninges. Meninges are the membranes that cover the brain and the spinal cord. We'll go into that later. So this, this is the midbrain. So this one is very close to the spinal cord. Well, actually, it extends into the, this yellow part is now the start of the spinal cord. You see? It's the spinal cord that goes from here all the way down here, somewhere here. You mm -hmm. see, if you take out this, this, these bones piece by piece, take one segment, for example, there is a hole there. So who likes donuts, for example? I, I do. Donuts. 
Okay. It's like almost. Okay. Consider this is this is one vertebra. Okay. There's a hole like a donut inside, right? And you stack them together. Just imagine if you had more, like how many? Thirty of them. Then you get a tunnel inside, right? A canal. And that is uh, inside is the spinal cord. That that space is to be occupied by the spinal cord. So this is how it works. Okay. So it's even more protected all the way down. Yes. The bone will be protecting the, the nervous tissue. So remember the spinal cord is also part of the central nervous system. Alright, so the bone here will protect the brain. Now this little thing, you know, it's actually a similar, it looks similar to the cerebrum, is known as the cerebellum. And if you look at it closely, look at it in the book, um, there, there's a, there, there are white striation, striations here. Looks like a drawing of a tree. Yeah. Now these these ancient doctors or anatomists have this very um, vibrant imagination, and they call it the arbor vitae. Mm. Without looking into your book, this is in Latin. What does it mean? Arbor. We you know when you say life. yes. When you say arbor, arbor day, it's about trees, right? Then vitae means life. So arbor vitae is the tree of life. I don't know why they call it the tree of life, but it just looks like a drawing of a tree. So it's this part. See, it's this part, the striations. Okay, that's the uh, arbor vitae. And it's part of the cerebellum. What is this part? Hmm? This little part? Pituitary? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a pitu pitu pituitary gland, right? Mm -hmm. So if you remember, if there's a tumor there, it will be pressing on the nerves, especially the optic nerve, which is responsible for the eye. So if you allow it to grow so big, you can actually go blind. You might start with diplopia, then eventually you go blind because it will be pressing on the optic nerve. Now, there is a to take care of that. Which, which you think is a better way if you want to do surgery on the, a tumor of the pituitary gland? Would you go here? Trans. So you'll have to cut through normal brain tissue, right? Trans. Or you Trans. can go through here, break this uh, septum, and go there, and then bam, it's there. So there will be less damage to normal tissue. What do you call that procedure? Transnasal. Transnasal what? But generally what? Starts with an H. It's true. Followed by the Y. Hymen? Transhymen? No. Hymen is not no. there. Come on. <laughs> like, it's, always on the mind. Mind. it's always on the mind. You know, Mary, you should know where the hymen is. Yeah, you know what I'm there. Okay. <laughs> There's no hymen in my mind. You know why the hymen? I don't know. <laughs> All right. I don't know what I'm talking about. What's the other name of the pituitary gland? The master gland? The, 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 the acorn thing? Pine? <laughs> the, the pituitary gland. You highlighted it. Last oh, term. third eye. No, that's a pineal gland. <laughs> it's all a piece. So what is the pituitary? It's a master Hypothesis, gland. right? Oh, that's right. Hypothesis. Oh. Hypothesis. The anterior part is the adenohypothesis. The posterior part, posterior pituitary, is the uh, neurohypothesis. So it is no, also known as a hypothesis. The surgical procedure is a hypophysectomy. Transnasal, trans, uh, transsinoidal hypophysectomy. That's the surgical procedure. We're getting there. You are. You you should remember that because mm -hmm. there is in 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 chapter fourteen. Uh, there is a discussion on that post hypophysectomy patient. How does the nurse take care of that patient? All right? So you have to know these terms. Okay. What else do we need to know? So that is the pituitary gland and just <laughs> the, uh, the posterior part, right? The 
the neurohypophysis, how many hormones are produced, are released there? Like 12. Mm. Right. Oh, that's the two. Come on, guys. You got this in the endocrine. There's two. I'm still two. two. Who said two? Anel. Anel. Two. Wait, who is it? It's Michelle. It's Michelle. 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 Okay, two. Remember, I said just remember that the posterior pituitary has two and all the rest in the anterior. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So all, all the others are in the anterior. Actually, the ADH or the vasopressin. And the other one is oxytocin, oh, right? Yeah. ADH actually produced, I know, oxytocin is actually produced in the hypo, 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 hypothalamus, right? It and it's be. just it's stored in the posterior pituitary. And then it's released when the time comes. Okay? Remember, remember. The 5th of November. So these are the functions of the brainstem. Brainstem, it's on table 8-1. What page is that? You have it? 182. Okay? So try to just to read through the uh, functions of each. And higher than the brainstem are the uh, diencephalon, which are the parts of the hypothalamus. And above the hypothalamus is the thalamus. And above it is the uh, pineal gland, which is the third eye. What hormone is produced by the pineal gland again? Melatonin, which is responsible for cardiac, part of it is uh, sleep. wakefulness and sleep. Melatonin. Okay. Right. Melatonin. Okay. Um, it's supposed to help you sleep too, right? Uh, the, you can buy it from the, it's over the counter, but I don't know if it works. A lot of patients tell me that it doesn't really work. Then the cerebrum is the thing. That's what separates us from the other animals. Without it, we'll be just like any other animal. That's why humans, have have uh, have a bigger have the biggest brains among <coughs> other animals bigger than a whale, bigger than a <coughs> than an elephant. Just imagine the bird, any bird. The brain is very small. How much thinking can it do? It doesn't think at all. It just do reflexes or instincts, right? Yeah, so the size of the brain is actually correlated with. We'll call it uh, thinking or rational function. Okay. So that's the cerebrum. Okay, that's what it does. It makes us think. It makes us rational. It makes us sentient. Sina? Sentient. Thinking beings. Okay. Critically thinking. What am I? Huh? I think, therefore I am. Yeah. Okay. Now enough with the philosophy. Now <laughs> let's uh, continue with the anatomy. All right. So, so this is how the the brain is organized. Okay. So after the brainstem will be this part it's known together collectively as the diencephalon. Is that clear? Very clear. Okay. Um, now, the other, second largest, the cerebellum, remember, with the arbor vitae, is the second largest part of the human brain. If I may go back. You're not, you're not, you're not use up all your memory. Oh, no. uh, uh, I'll After you guys the cloud? Later. It goes to the cloud? Yeah. The cloud. Okay. This, one, this one is the, uh, this one is the uh, cerebellum. Remember this? It's the second largest <laughs> part in there. Okay? And the arbor vitae, we talked about that. It's actually why it's white, uh, because it's more of a network of the white matter. So you know white matter is the myelinated, the uh, myelinated axons of the central nervous system. Okay. And function is helps control muscle contractions, and it maintains balance and stability and movement, uh, smooth movement. Therefore, if there's a cerebellar problem, then the patient will lose all of those. Will lose move, movement, there will be ataxia, and the patient will be at risk for, for falls. Because you know you cannot, they, they can be easily unbalanced or imbalanced and they fall, all right? So they cannot coordinate their movements. So that's a function of the cerebellum, okay? Here, so 
Where's the cerebellum here? Like a tree. Right there. This is the this is the pointer. That. Okay. Oops. Oh, no. Oops. There we go. I got it. I got it. Okay. Right here. Okay. And the white part, like the three. pale parts, this is tree like this known as the arbor vitae. It is cerebellum. Second biggest part of the human brain. This one here is the well, never mind. It's known as the corpus callosum. I want to eat that brain. Now the hypothalamus, okay, let's go back. It's here. It's hypo underneath the thalamus. Thalamus is above the hypothalamus. Okay? Now hypothalamus, remember it's the Below the thalamus. All of all of those uh, RF releasing factors like the thyroid releasing factors, they all come from here, right? And it's also the part that is responsible for regulation of our body temperature. So that's the hypothalamus, and above it is the thalamus. Okay. All right. Um, it's a major center for controlling the autonomic nervous system. So hypothalamus, autonomic uh, nervous system, and hormone secretion, we mentioned that both the anterior and posterior pituitary glands, and also for temperature, okay? Next is the uh, thalamus. So we're going from the bottom to going up, okay? Uh, the dumbbell-shaped mass is the thalamus. It's just above the hypothalamus, and it relays sensory Im impulses to the cerebral cortex. Then the pineal gland. The pineal gland is known, it's a very small body, and even now, they are still trying to explore what is this gland about. They've already identified some functions, have identified the melatonin, but they're still wondering maybe it is doing something else, something more than just that. And it's called a pineal gland because it resembles a pine nut. You know what a pine nut is? It's not, it's not a screw, it's a nut. That is from the pine tree. So here, see, that's what that's the pineal gland that's kind of big uh, in this in this drawing, and um, no, this is the hypothalamus. Where's the pineal gland? Oh, it's not even shown here. It's where are you? Here. It's here. Okay, and it looks like. There. Looks like uh, looks like a pine nut. Oh, you see it? Right there. Which looks like this. That's the pine nut. The nut of the. Oh, I coffee. <laughs> All right. Let's take the break. And the duck was quacking. That was in a part two. If you like what you saw, go ahead and squish that like button. Feel free to leave a comment.